Ah, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Welcome back to the Dugout Football Channel. The Champions League is back this week, and Liverpool's first game is against AC Milan, the first ever fixture between the two in the group stage. We have never met AC Milan in the group stage. It has just been finals. So, big game ahead. I have a big, big panel tonight, as you can obviously see. From right to left, we have Mr. Connor Niblett from the Cup Council. How are you doing, Connor? I'm doing very well, thank you, mate. Um, we've been, a little bit of spoilers, been waiting for two hours for Doug to finish doing what he's doing. Um, <laughs> D- Josh is human, which is fantastic. But no, look, I uh, hope everyone's having a fantastic day. We've also got Mr. Jack Mack, LFC. How are you doing, Jack? Not too bad, mate. Thank you very much for having me on. And this is this everyone at home. This will be the best pre-match build-up show that we've ever done. So, yeah, enjoy everyone. Have a good day. <laughs> There's someone who is going on Wednesday, and I really hope you enjoy yourself. It's the lovely Sophie. How are you doing, Sophie? I'm good. A little <laughs> bit stressed because Doug only invited me on it like an hour ago. So, but yeah, I'm made up. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me back. And very excited for Wednesday. Are we- I bet, I bet you are. And we've also got, uh, uh, shall we call him an Italian, uh, you know, sort of what is it, a specialist in Serie A? <laughs> it is Mr. Josh Bell. How are you doing, Josh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> uh, enough follow, enough follow, said there. Follow, enough follow, said. Follow the teeth. Fall off the teeth. <laughs> <laughs> That's French. No, I don't care. I'm just, I'm just, yeah. He, he's, been, he's been backstage <laughs> for that long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, apolo- apologies, you apologies, people. But. Aye, <laughs> right. well, it must be. But, AC Milan. Um, well, let's talk about past games because obviously the main thing about this is that the last time we played AC Milan was 2007 and then back in 2005. Now, I kind of vaguely remember Istanbul. I vaguely remember 2007 um, as well. So, Connor, the fact that we haven't played AC Milan in the group stage, will that make it a little bit more special on Wednesday? Uh, yeah, you could say that. Um, I think it's going to be special either way. Champions League football's back in a full crowd um, for the first time in, what, 18 months? You know, around that. So, look, it's it's, yeah. it's special anyway because it's two of Europeans, uh, you know, elite clubs, isn't it? You know, you look at it. AC Milan bought seven Champions League. Of course, us, uh, six European Cups in that. So, you know, it's a, f- a fairly decent amount um, of European Cups, but mm-hmm. look, I think it's it's going to be a, a proper atmosphere um, on Wednesday, and very much looking forward to it because AC Milan have been one of these teams that has had their rebuild and have finally got back into the Champions League um, after a few years, I think, in the Europa League and not being in Europe as well. So, it, I'm looking forward to the game, and hopefully, it'll be a very entertaining game as well for the for, for you know for the, the previous games that has happened, especially uh, Istanbul as the most intense, intense but most enjoyable game as well. Yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously, I mean, obviously, Jack, we've we've obviously seen uh, AC Milan sort of have a lot of a rebuild, as obviously Connor says. They were banned from Europe for one year because of obviously financial uh, fair play um, as well. It's just great to see a name like AC Milan back in the Champions League, isn't it? Yeah, we've missed them, even when we were not in the Champions League. I think us and Milan and certain clubs that have uh, such a historic. Um, history within the competition, it's great to see. And obviously, they, fin- they finished second in Serie A last season, and they're a young side, which we'll discuss tonight. But they've got a lot of positive players going forward, and I'm, I'm intrigued to see how, how well they do could do in the knockout stage if they can reach the knockout stages. But um, especially, it'd be a massive test for this Liverpool side as well, Miss. Yeah, and Sophie, this this group actually has fifteen Champions League between between the four clubs. Obviously, Atletico Madrid have never won it, but FC Porto have won it twice. We've won it six times, and AC Milan have won it seven. So, AC Milan, it's it's a tricky fixture, but it's 
I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I mean, it's Champions League football, as the lads have said. I don't care who you're playing, really. You're just excited to be back, aren't you? It's the first European you know, game, and it happens to be at home as well, against AC Milan, of you know, most iconic match, really, isn't it? You know, Istanbul 2005. Like, you know, 2005, I was 10 when that game happened, so I don't really remember that much of the game itself. I just remember it going, the penalties at the end, like that, which is obviously the iconic bit, but it'll just be nice to go up against them, you know, in the initial round, which we've never done before. And we've only ever played them when it's counted, like, you know, the last little minute trying to get a trophy. We've never played them in the build up to it. So it'll be nice to see what they're going to play, like, especially after a rebuild, especially with how our squad's developed since, yeah. you know, God knows how many years ago now, what's that, 17, 18, 15 years ago, you know, since we last played them in 2017, yeah. like that, it'll be nice to see how the two sides play again. You know, it it will be nice to see two iconic yeah. sides come head to head again and just see what happens. But it's it's going to be a great night. Oh, I I, honest, I, <clears throat> I honestly cannot wait as well. So, shall we have a look at some of the players that actually AC Milan have got? Well. I, I look at this. I look at this corner, and I look at the names: Zlatan Ibrahimovic, fingers crossed, Van Dijk, and Mark uh, Zlatan, uh, Olivier Giroud, Frank Kessie, of course, um, Taimoy Bakayoko, that Josh will obviously know about, uh, Chelsea legend, of course. Now nah, I'm really joking. Sandro Tonali, who I don't know if I want to say this, but I always buy him on FIFA for Liverpool. Um, <laughs> Don't get, don't get me started on that. Brahim Diaz is a very good player as well. Simon Kerr, obviously Denmark captain. Uh, Fikayo Tamori as well. So they've got a lot of young players, Josh. How how have you found AC Milan this season so far? AC Milan are a very, very good team. Uh, a, a bit of a scary start that people don't know about. About it, that they're actually fir- they've won their last 13 out of their last 14 games in Syria. Uh, their last their last loss was a three 0 loss away to Lazio, and before that they didn't lose a game. They didn't lose a game within six games after uh, losing to Napoli only one 0 with ten men, and also losing to United in the Europa League second leg. So they are a very very good team. Um, defensively though, they could be a bit suspect. Though their backline this year is very very good. Uh, their two centre back uh, promise of Rom- Romagnoli and uh, Fakao Tomori is a really 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 good uh, centre back partnership. A uh, very young partnership too in age, but. It's a system that's worked. Uh, they've got a, they've got a new right back in to kind of push friends. The up bats worked incredibly well and fit uh, Fio Hernandez at left back, who somehow didn't get taken to the Euros by the Champs for France, which was an, an absolutely ridiculous decision. This is probably one of the best left backs in the league, probably definitely top five in Europe. Um, it's a fair. It's a fair. It's, and the two midfielders, or uh, as you say, Toloni and uh, Kelsey. Kelsey had an incredible, incredible year last year. I think everyone remembers his performance at Old Trafford that he produced for AC Milan when he when he ran the show. So this AC Milan team is very. It's got the potential, but they're, they're the youngest squad. They're the youngest uh, average squad in Serie A, which not a lot of people know about. Obviously, oh, everyone everyone thinks about Slatan or Jerome yeah. Finger or a bunch of uh, it's an old team, but it is a really, really, really young team. And the man, the the, the manager that they've got, um, he, he's done he's done a fantastic job. Uh, he, he he's rebuilt the AC Milan team. Uh, you know, uh, I think he's I think you pronounce it Paroli. I think you pronounce it. He he's done a he's done a fantastic job. Um. This AC Milan team is a team that I think a lot of, when people when they withdrew, people were thinking, "Oh, it's good having AC Milan," but this is they are a really tough outfit um, to go against. They're, they're going to cause every single team in this in this uh, group stage trouble. You, I think the only thing is that they are young, they are naive, they do have a very young backline, uh, which Liverpool. Obviously, Liverpool's attack and threat this season has been exquisite. It's been it's been really really good. Uh, so that point. So, but do you expect uh, do you expect them to sit quite deep? They are under attack team. They don't come out. And, you know, they don't come out. They won't press you that much. They won't come out and try and control the game. They very much are control based. They had 156 less passes than Lazio at the weekend. Uh, they did load. They did, but the thing that's key about it, they had 20 shots, only three on target, but that was shows the amount of counter-attacking opportunities they were able to get. So uh, it's a team that's definitely going to give Liverpool a very tough outfit, but the back line is an experience and that could work into Liverpool's hands. Yeah, let's talk about some of the danger man, Connor. I've, I've, put, I've put a few there. Zlatan, I said obviously, because he is a, he is a danger. Uh, Frank Kessie, Giroud, 
Uh, I'm also going to say Brahim Diaz as well as uh, Dangerman. I think these are the players we're going to have to watch out for, I think. But obviously, Giroud, I think, is out, isn't he? He's got um, COVID, I think. Yeah, he, he, I'm, I'm glad of that in a sense. Not the fact that he has COVID, the fact he's out this game because I think he's more of a threat than Ibrahimovic. I think, look, Zlatan's done what Zlatan's done. But, you know, to say, can Virgil van Dijk keep him quiet? Of course he can. Joe, Joe Matip can keep him quiet. That's how good he is. Giroud always loves playing against Liverpool, doesn't he? You know, whenever it was Arsenal or Chelsea, he'd always love scoring a goal. Um against us and you know, like Josh said there you know Theo Hernandez I think when Real Madrid signed him back like four years ago I always remember back to his uh, presentation where he couldn't kick a ball for five minutes yeah. um, and yeah. to be fair he's done tremendously well in rebuilding his career because I think Zidane just run him in you know into the ground especially you know they signed Phil on Mendy and then, of course, Marcelo. You're not going to get ahead of either one of them um, at Madrid. But yeah. he's done well um, to rebuild his career there. And I think he's, you know, if we're talking about counter-attacks, you know, he's got the pace to do that. You know, Giroud, uh, well, if it was Giroud or Ibrahimovic, they're going to be on the last man, like kind of like what Bamford was doing against us. Um, you know, trying to split, you know, John Matip and Virgil van Dijk. But I just think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a very similar game to Leeds where, like Josh said, Le- uh, Milan, uh, you know, they like to counter attack, they like to sit back um, and allow Liverpool or whoever in Syria to do what they want to do first and then they'll, you know, spring on the attack. But I think it's going to be like Leeds. I think Liverpool will control the game and I think Jürgen will learn. He, he's learned over the last, you know, how many years, you know, four, you know, three, four years, how to deal with teams like this. And I think it'll be another example as well of, you know, Liverpool playing the build-up play and just, you know, allowing Milan to have the ball at times, but then also, you know, just commanding the game then. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Jack, obviously, we've obviously seen what AC Milan can do and, you know, they caused Manchester United so many problems mm-hmm. last season at Old Trafford. I think I think they were very unlucky to actually lose that in the end, uh, 2-1 on aggregate, but I feel that they can cause us a lot of problems and, and I think their midfield is very, very, very interesting. I also look at their defence as well. Having Simon Kier at the back, alongside mm-hmm. like an experienced, an experienced defender like a Fakayo Tamori, I think will help them. Yeah, definitely. I think we've discussed Tamori possibly be an alpha the game, which will be. I've I mean I've seen a couple of games on on the highlights on YouTube and that, and he's quite quite impressed. It's great to see a young talent go out abroad outside of the Premier League and and flourish. It was crazy that I wasn't selected uh, for Southgate for the Euros, mate. But it'd be intriguing, especially if we play do play a four two three one, if we can get that extra man in midfield in and around, whether that be Thiago, Naby. Or Henderson, really? I think you the nail on the head there, uh, uh, Josh. Do the are the stereotypical Italian side that like to defend and then counter attack, or are they quite expansive? In, in um, I don't know. But probably basically what he's done with them is he, he's, he's made them he's made them tough a bit. He, what he likes to try and do is he likes to try. He does like to kind of soak up the pressure, but they, they like to counter attack with. They don't like to hit like they, do, they won't hit long balls forward. They do like to try and play from defense, but it's very it's not like Manchester City where they'll pass around the back a few times and then go forward. They're very much try to go back to forth, but you know on the on the ground moving the ball very quickly. And, and in that sense, mm. and it's something that they've got really good technical midfielders who are able to get that ball to the front players, which makes a very big difference. Uh, as I said, that's what they did very very well against Lazio was Leo and Leo and uh, Ferenci and Diaz were just able to create so much space and uh, Rabbit was playing like more of a false nine, dropping deep, creating space is in behind the Lazio defence so it isn't a team that's going to like they aren't going to they, they do play 4-2-3-1 the so formation they've always played under PR said ever since he came in they'll they'll they'll, they'll not sit deep deep but they, they you know they'll soak up the pressure but the counter attack that they will have is really really explosive and uh, you, you've seen against Manchester United they really are good at creating those chances and uh, I will say I was just doing the research Olivier Giroud will be start will be in the squad for this game he is he's out of quarantine so he will be in the squad for the game so they you know, having Rebic, Slatan, and Drew as your options up front, you know, it's, it, it, their attacking options are there. As, and um, I, even if people laugh at his name, Alan Sealmakers, Seal another very good player that could come off the bench for for AC Milan. Um, 
they've, they've, they've also got ben, Bandicoot on the bench too uh, normally. So yeah. it's a team. Oh, it's a team yeah. that could cause. Yeah. This is a team that could cause a lot of issues for Liverpool uh, because their, their transition from back to front when they get the ball back is incredibly good and with such a young team with a lot of energy it sets them down to the to the wire yeah. I've just seen the stats there Doug as well and everyone on the chat as well um, Kessie was Milan's second highest goal scorer last season in City uh, Rich did 13 goals with 4 assists and then uh, Rebic was the third highest in City uh, scoring 11 goals with 4 assists and obviously his last one was the main one um, scoring 15 with two um, assists. So yeah, I'm intrigued, and I think especially we need Fabinho or Thiago to really isolate. I think if we can definitely stop um, Tonali and then Kessie uh, playing as well, I think that'd be a massive key for, for Liverpool um, this week. Have we lost Doug? Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. All right. So, um, I might as well just try and continue this on in some way, shape, or form. Uh, Sophie, I'll, I'll ask you, um, what, uh, what, you know, do you think that at home to this AC Milan, that this, do you think it's going to be a comfortable game, or do you, do you, do you think some Liverpool fans who, when the draw was, I know some Liverpool fans have seen all over Twitter were saying AC Milan's going to be easy, you know, they're, they're nothing like they used to be, but they're not. This is going to be a team that Liverpool have to be mentally prepared for because it's not going to be as easy as some make it out to be. No, it's not going to be easy. I, no, I don't. I don't get this whole mentality. Liverpool's going. Oh yeah, it's going to be an easy draw. Well, Liverpool, do you not realise that the majority of games we've dropped points to or lost have been the easy games? We tend to show up a lot in the harder fixtures, and you know, us and AC Milan have got a history. And we are we have won six. They have won seven. We played them twice. Um, you know it. There's a lot of history. There's a lot of emotion in this this fixture. It's not one that I can think that any fan that I know of would be writing off easily, saying, "Oh, we're going to win this." It's you know dead in the water. It's it's a, it's a done deal. Liverpool have got this through. I think the advantage that we've got is that our squad is more tested. You know, tested, tried, and proven. It's more, as you said before, Josh, you know, AC Milan team at the minute is very young, very naive, very inexperienced in certain points. In other areas, they're obviously very experienced players. Obviously, you've got Zlatan Ibrahimovic, you've got Giroud, who's played in the Premier League and against Liverpool. He knows what it's about. Um, but that that's, that's the only edge I can think of that Liverpool would have, that we are more of a succinct unit presently on paper than they are. But... You know, you can have the most tight knit club in the world. You can have a team that's outstanding from the start and eleven to the end of the bench. You can have superstars, but unless you play right on the day, unless your head's in the right space, it makes absolutely no difference. So I think you can't write this game off saying that it's an easily done thing. Um, we've just kind of got to see what happens when the final whistle goes on Wednesday and see how we perform because they might outrun us. We might outperform them. It it's not an easy game to predict, and I think if you do predict it either way. You're a little bit of an idiot to be honest because it's it's not one that you can you just chalk up to nothing. Uh, Doug is technically saying his phone's crash. I'm just going to keep it uh, rolling until he is mm-hmm. back because we have more than two hours behind schedule just for the go for the start of recording all over again. Uh, Mr. 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 Uh, Mr. Connor, I'll come over to you. Um, Obviously, um, Liverpool, obviously, Liverpool's last uh, Champions League campaign didn't exactly go to plan. Um, so, uh, and obviously, for the Champions League, your 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 record at Anfield in the Champions League is incredibly good. Um, with with this young AC, with this very young AC Milan team coming to what role the Champions League nights at Anfield are like, you know, do 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 you think do you think a fast start for Liverpool is absolutely crucial in this game to get the fans going and to put AC Milan right away on the back foot? Uh, I would say yes, in the term of you know just giving AC Milan a bit more of a nerve because I think, look, AC Milan's target will be keep it nil-nil first half, for example, and keep the Liverpool fans quiet, um, which, you know, is, of course, everyone's target to, when they come at Anfield. But the fact that, you know, we know, as Doug's coming back, um, we, we know as how Liverpool have been... You know, the Champions League, Liverpool always show up, especially at Anfield. I think Atalanta 
was the last team to beat us, which it was like a, I think we had like a 20 game unbeaten streak at Anfield uh, in Europe, which of course that covers Champions League and Europa League as well. But it's, it's the fact that, you know, like you said, last season, we were all joking around off. Oh, it's in Istanbul or oh, we can win number seven or like this. Um, and that, and, like, look, if Liverpool's players stayed fit, Liverpool will be right in there for the Champions League. Um, I think pretty much all of us have said that PSG are the favourites to go on and win it this year, um, which, shock. Um, but, look, Liverpool, Liverpool will give it the best try. And for me, we have to win every single home game like we did back, what was it, when the year that we won it, where, you know, like every single home game is a must win because... As we knew in that season, you know, away games so unpredictable. We could never, you know, get a goal yeah. away, let alone win win away from home. So every single home game is crucial. So we need to, you know, get the quick uh, fire goals in. And you know, I, I I would love to batter AC Milan. I would just to set set the benchmark. But you know, like Sophie said earlier on, there's no easy game in the Champions League. That you know, it's the highest competition in, in Europe. So yeah, um, hopefully Liverpool get onto a good start. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I am back. Stupid phone just crashed. Uh, starting 11 uh, is going to be very interesting here. Um, Sophie, I'll start with you. What would be your starting 11 for Wednesday? Um, usual back four is, is a given. Um, I'd go for Fabinho's got to start. I want to say Nabi and Tiago. I want mm-hmm. to say Nabi and Tiago, but I have a sneaky feeling he's going to put Hendo in because he's the captain. I would yeah. have said had Harvey Elliott not got injured, Harvey Elliott would have got a start in this game because he was flying high. Um, so it's a toss up for me between Nabi or um, Hendo. I, I don't know which one he's going to do because obviously he dropped Hendo last game. Um, and then front yeah. three, obviously, Salah. Mane yeah. and uh, Jota. Interesting. Connor, can you see any changes um, Klopp could make? Obviously, one will have to obviously come in for obviously Elliot, but can you see maybe a change at the back or something? Uh, to be fair, I had, it, I had it in my head, you know, Simicus or Robbo, Simicus or Robbo, but I think it will be Andy Robertson. I think Simicus will play against Palace, I think, because uh, rotation's going to need to happen yeah. um, over the, obviously with three games per week. But yeah, I think usual back line uh, with Ali there as well. I think Fabinho and Thiago are undroppable. Like I said, it's crucial. Yeah. Um, it, it's crucial that we get three points um, to start the campaign off, you know, brilliantly. And then it is that <laughs> toss-up. Then, do you put in Hendo? I think most people would. I think for me, I would put Naby Keita in. Um, but I also wouldn't be surprised if we saw Oxley Chamberlain. Um, just for I, I think with Thiago, we, we need that creative player going fit further. But he, he's not like we saw him yesterday. He was not, when Ox came on. He, he offered nothing. But with with that, he's playing a false nine, not in that right hand side midfield mm-hmm. role. We know everyone that plays on their right hand side has a freedom at times. But then do you Ox- have with Thiago on the left hand side, where Thiago prefers to play on the right with Trent. Well, T- Thiago played on the right hand, on the left hand side against Leeds. Man and of match. One of the sub, not a starter. That's that's a difference. It's very different coming on and covering on the left mm. when you're a sub as opposed to starting the game in your in not your preferred position. It's easy when you're coming on halfway through sixty minutes when you've only got thirty five. You've got you know, basically got thirty five minutes to play on that side. It's already established the, the attack, the press, the momentum's already set the game in motion. But it's like playing with your left foot when you're right footed. You don't and yeah. you only do it when you need to. Yeah, I can see that, but I think I think on a creative point, at the end of the day, if if Milan is going to be a low block, we need creativity. There, I think Naby Keita is going to start. I think look, I think mm-hmm. Naby's a nail on start. I think Hendo will come on and sit and settle the game down. But I wouldn't be surprised if Fox come on and was uh, well started the game on the right hand side because you know look at him. You know, I know it's not the same Oxley Chamberlain, but 
you know, yeah. Klopp does like playing him in big games. And I think, you know, there's no mm-hmm. bigger game the first game back at Anfield. But yeah, I think for yeah. front, uh, normal front three then. But I wouldn't be surprised. Jack, what will be you? You can muted himself again. So I know it's uh, if, you, if you know, you know. Uh, I'll say that. If you know, you know. Uh, <laughs> um, but in relation to our post match mate that we've done, I think I, I, we mentioned possibly a Canate to come in. Whether he mm. is going to be getting a role in the Champions League because he needs to play minutes, whether that's. We've seen, obviously, the young lads last year play the group games and, and he didn't really look out of place. It's a big opportunity if Canate does come in, but I don't think he will be phased because we've got to give Matip and, and Van Dijk. I don't think Van Dijk's come back fully fit, has he? But I think with Matip, you've got to be careful. For me, I'd possibly drop Canate in with Van Dijk um, just to give Joel Matip a bit of a rest. I know like he's fully fit yeah. and you probably want to play him, but just for the sheer cautiousness of, of really resting Matip because I think he does need it um, so I've broken Arty in with Van Dijk uh, Trent right back and then Robbo and then Ali um, I, I fully understand where Soph and Connor are coming from with, with in relation to team selection but I think when when you're playing against the likes of Kessie and Tonali you need the physical presence and I think as well as Naby has started this season. Um, yeah. It, he, especially just look at that Real Madrid game when he did get brought in and a high intensity game, which it will be against Milan. Um, for me, I'd, I'd go with Henderson, just that physical presence and obviously yeah. his quality on the ball, Thiago and Fabinho to, to mop up the uh, do as usual job and then go with Jose up front and then Mane and Salah. And uh, uh, possibly drop uh, Origi up front. <laughs> but uh, I think we're saving him for the knockout. No. You know, certain no. games. Save him, <laughs> yeah. knock him out. <laughs> yeah. save, uh, save, him for, save him for like League Cup, Pepe Cup, etc. Yeah. Hopefully he doesn't wear his jeans if he is playing up front. <laughs> uh, oh, but, yeah. goodness me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, the, the, the main three I go with. Yeah, I'm going to go, I'm going to go Ali Trent. I think Canati will come in. I think Canati will come in for Mata. Van Dijk, Robertson will definitely play. Fabinho, Thiago. I'm going to say Henderson. As much as I would like Keita, I do think Henderson will come in. I agree with what Sophie said. I think, obviously, because he's the captain, I think he will come in. And then I think it'll be Salah, Mane, Jota um, as well. Uh, Josh, I am going to ask you this. What do you think the AC Milan lineup will be? Uh, the AC Milan's into a good question. So, uh, I think it was a 4 2 3 1. Um, sometime, sometimes last season he did switch to a five at the back, but I can't see, that, can't see them doing that too far for a state of the start of the season. I think Matt Milligan, the starting goal, he's been really, really good. He only signed for 17 million euros. So it was a great signing uh, to replace Donnarumma from uh, to replace Donnarumma. So he's, he's done fantastically. I, expe- I do expect, uh, uh like. Yeah, probably because my pronunciation of names is absolutely woeful, but I expect uh, Cana Bruno to be a right back. He, he, um, he, he's got that position. I do. I don't expect uh, any changes uh, within the centre back pairing. I do expect Tomori and uh, Ramalola to start. Uh, don't worry, Jack. Uh, they won't go sweaty style. Hand at Hernandez will stay at left back. Uh, that, that will not change. Um, as I said, there is no Bakayoko. Bakayoko will not be uh, will be out for this game. So uh, Tolini and Kelsey will start in the midfield. I do expect a change on the right hand side. I don't expect Ferenczi to play. Um, I expect uh, Alan Salesmakers to come in for Ferenczi on the right hand side because I don't think Ferenczi particularly suits will suit this game. So I expect a Salesmaker to come and see people absolutely love that name. I don't know why. Uh, and then I expect, uh, <laughs> I expect I expect Diaz to be at the number ten. He's been in incredible form. I do also expect maybe a change. I do expect a change on the left hand side of the of their um, front three. I expect a guy called Trore to play there. He's a he's a twenty he's a twenty four year old left winger. He, but he, he's more defensive and he's he's quicker and he's a bit more defensive. He works hard. He's got more energy, which is something you need to get there for. And then I expect Rabbit to be dropped for Olivier Giroud up front. See now oh, that that line up there. I expect this change. This change. This change. This change. That fills me as a Liverpool fan with a little bit of confidence that you want to make that many changes. I mean, obviously, that doesn't mean that those changes will be made, of course, but yeah. hy- hypothetically, let's say all those changes that, re- you know, Josh just said happen. 
that to me as a Liverpool side is like okay wow you're really you're throwing out everything you've got into this and that's not great sometimes when you change everything that much and um, the chemistry can completely just go to balance um, but just before we move on, to, I just want to go back to what you two, you and Jack said about Canate. Now, I like Canate, but it, I'm not going to lie, it fills me with a little bit of anxiety of the thought of dropping Mata. Like, I was mm. all, I was all like, gung ho. Once we signed Canate, I was like, Canate and Virgil, back line, 100%, that's my new back line. And then seeing how amazing Matip's been, and I understand like Matip is made of glass and you've got to be very careful with him. And giving him a rest would be good if we could. But then I'm also thinking, but it's AC Milan. I don't, I, mm. I, do I want to put someone that I don't really know? In the, it fills me with a little bit of anxiety. Uh, yes, it worries me a little bit. Let's put big, big, big Nat in the after the defence. Yeah, <laughs> let's do that. Let's put Nat Phillips on. Nat and Virgil. No, I'd, I'd be happy with that. Yeah. No, yeah. it's, it'd be intriguing, isn't it? At least we've got options mm-hmm. in defence. Yeah. So we didn't have last year. Um, <laughs> You know what? Watch Nat Phillips start now. Hilarious. <laughs> That'd be amazing. <laughs> right, amazing. before we do go, before we do go, what is your prediction for the game? Josh, as obviously uh outsider's point of view, what are you predicting for this? Well, I know I know you guys are going to predict Liverpool win, so I have to be I have to be I have to be the guy who throws Cal among the pigeons. I cannot predict a Liverpool win here. Deep down, I think Liverpool will win this game. I do think AC Milan I just feel like I think Liverpool will just exploit AC Milan. I just feel like this is just too much of a task. I think this is the one game AC Milan really could not have on their first week. They would have took anyone else in this group. They would have took Atletico Madrid because Atletico Madrid would have played into their style and into their philosophy. They go away to Anfield against Liverpool in the form they are, and it's the complete opposite to what AC Milan would want. This is the worst thing they would have asked for. So I do think Liverpool's going to win, but for the fact that obviously are going to predict Liverpool to win, I'm not going to say that because I have to be I have to be biased towards AC Milan and to the fact that I hate Liverpool. I think it'll be a 1-1 draw with Olivier Giroud getting the goal. 1-1 draw. Very interesting. Sophie, what are you going to go for? Um, I really... I don't... No, like I think mm. it can go, it can go either way for me. It can add because it's so much importance put on this one game already. I don't know whether are we going to like buckle a little bit under the pressure. Are we going to make silly mistakes? Are we going to end up with a draw? You know, I want to say we're going to win. I'd be very, very, I'm being optimistic that we'll win. But I think the reality is, I think I might go with what Josh said and go with a draw, to be honest. I think that's draw. more likely. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Uh, Jack, what are you going for? Uh, this can't go to penalties, can it? Because it can't be asked when number three. three. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, was, I was crying my eyes out last time we, we met the oh, obviously in Zaggy. As long as in Zaggy oh. saying that. It, well, it, he's for... probably old enough to still play. He's about yeah. 70 now. <laughs> Jack, Jack, watch your words, though, because you, you've got the AR. You could easily award AC Milan a last minute yeah. penalty to win the <laughs> right. game from a point. So just be careful. Um, what you're... Don't give five penalties. That, that, yeah, that, that's, yeah. that's only if you're Man United, the game gets stopped and replayed. Um, oh, but, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be positive. I'm going to go 5 0 Liverpool. The crowd's going to be absolutely behind us. And the crowd will be rocking Sophie and that with and everyone within the ground. Never want to know. Nanny Rose on my own screen. <laughs> <laughs> Camera fans to self. Go ahead. Uh, but yeah, five nil. You might see me. <laughs> yeah, five-nil, so I go five nil. I'm being positive, mate. I told you this will be the best pre-match build-up show we've ever done. But yeah, five nil. And I tell you, I'll buy his all drinks if it's five nil. And Connor, I'll take that bet. I know, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, you know what? I feel confident in Liverpool. Look, I don't think Liverpool are going to buckle. I think you look know, European night, first back game back, European night, two 0 Liverpool. No, so I'm just, just, no. very wrong. See, see, very, very this is the thing I love about Connor. Connor's like, ah, I'm so confident. I'm really, you know, on Twitter, for God's sake, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Dude, I'm going to go 3 1. Yeah. To be fair, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go 3 1. Mark and Janud. 
Who's Mark and Janus? Josh, to be fair, on, on here I can be very, very confident, and then like literally my attitude changes as <laughs> oh. soon as the whistle blows. I know what tw- I know Twitter. Oh, for God's sake, old old Granda Slatan just scored against us. <laughs> <laughs> Where is it? Everyone on beat free match would be going, ah, Slatan won't do not, and then every classic Slatan. Slatan, yeah. <laughs> Oh, a context yeah. Latin and Joel. Yeah, I'm going to. Well. <laughs> I'm going to go three-one. I'm confident in the lads to get the job done. I think. I think they will score. And I, you know, Giroud always seems to score against us, so I'm going to say that as well. But we will see what happens on Wednesday. Uh, big, big thank you to my panel, uh, Connor, Jack, Sophie, and Josh uh, as well. Let us know what you think in the comment section down below. Let us know what you also think what the score is going to be <clears throat> and what the starting 11 is going to be as well and if you're an AC Milan fan if you're a Liverpool fan please talk to us and let us know in the comment section down below but come on Liverpool let's get the Champions League off to a winning start For up, my love. Later. get oh, get away see you later bye bye <laughs>